You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. I am so happy you are here. Hello, Slow Down Society. This is going to be part one of what I think is going to be a three-part series. And I'm just going to go with it because I think it's going to be three parts. I've sort of mapped it out in my head and I've taken some notes. And it sort of came to me because I went away this weekend. I'm recording this on President's Day And Adam and I, we were able to get a little getaway this weekend. So the kids and Adam have a three-day weekend, and I actually have the entire week off of work at my my daytime job, at my school job. And so we got away, and I am in the car, and we're driving over the Golden Gate Bridge, and it sort of hit me that... This bridge is right here in my backyard, and almost every time I drive over it, my eyes kind of well up with tears, and while there were no kids in the car today or or this weekend when we were driving over the bridge, when there are, I usually whip around to the back seat and I tell the kids, hey, soak it in, pay it attention. There are people on the other side of the world who are hoping and dreaming and praying of someday being able to see this bridge. And it's right here. And we take it for granted. And I want you to pay attention to this. And I want you to be grateful and be happy and be thankful for all of the things that you have right here in the right here and now. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about what your meaning of success is and what is your success definition. And so I'm going to lead into this series thinking it'll be three parts. And it's sort of a spoof on a personal development book that I read in my very early 20s. And I've talked to you about this before on this podcast, but it's Brian Tracy's The 21 Success Secrets of Self-Made Millionaires. And it's such a sensational title. And so I think that's why I was drawn to it when I was seeking out personal development books in our local library. I used to push my oldest in a stroller up and down the library shelves, the the rows in the library to try and keep her napping. So she wanted to always be kept moving when she was napping. So we were lucky enough that we lived close to a library. And then later when I was working for um, the local county, there was a another larger library within walking distance. And so on my lunch breaks, I would strap her into the stroller and we would walk there and I would just sort of jostle the stroller back and forth and back and forth. And um, I would fill the, the basket underneath with all of these books and I would come back and, and I would read them while I was at the county courthouse and I read them at nighttime and for all hours of the night because the kid never slept. (laughs) But anyway, so the the 21 success habits of self-made millionaires was sort of my guide and sort of what I was interested in. And I, I used it as a checklist and it wasn't until years, years and years later, after quite a few moves, I sort of unpacked my boxes of books, and I, I reopened this book. It's quite small. It's it's this little tiny green hardcover book. I realized, huh, here we are. We're in a million-dollar house here. There's something else. We did this all by ourselves, and, and I just sort of scanned the table of contents of these 21 success secrets, and I realized that sort of intuitively, subconsciously, methodically, I I don't know. We did, I did all of the things on the list and it's just kind of fun and it's sort of, 
Interesting. And so the reason this came to me over the weekend is we're we're driving around and, and we're in this kind of Marin County area. We ended up taking a ferry to Angel Island, which is just absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of the the understated, I don't know, evil stepsister, red-haired stepsister of Alcatraz. Everyone always talks about Alcatraz, but Angel Island is actually an absolutely fantastic place to walk around and and get some local history and and learn about the area with killer views and no crowds whatsoever. And you can hike around the whole thing and and it's just beautiful and it's very inexpensive. Um, It's free to get in and um, you're just paying for the ferry ride, which I think Adam said was like $15 a head round trip. So anyway, highly recommend Angel Island. But, But here we are in this picture, perfect, amazing, beautiful setting. And there's huge, huge homes on the hill kind of looking down at the bay and the and all of the sailboats docked and large homes, I mean, homes ranging between probably 10 and $30 million easily. And I sort of had this, this calm and, and peaceful feeling like, you know, I am just as happy as probably they are, if not more so. I love my life. I love my home. I'm just excited to go away on vacation as I am to come home. I like the people in my house. I like the things in my house. I like my car. I like my clothes. I like my towels. <laughs> and so I just want you to just kind of pay attention to all of this and, and really think it through. And when you are planning out your life, plan it in a way that you're not trying to escape from it. And that's what my hope is for you. Sure, go on vacations, plan adventures, do fun things, but don't get so caught up in the planning for the getaways that you forget to sort of look around and soak in all that you have and all that is just wonderful. Because that really is what slow living is all about. It's about being at peace and feeling content. And it doesn't mean you're settling. It doesn't mean you can't have goals or dreams or aspirations. Not at all. Many of the dreams that I have and the dreams that my clients end up working out and achieving, they achieve amazing things, miraculous things. But they do it because they're no longer stuck in an endless more, 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 more cycle. And they're taking the time to really slow down and listen to the inner voice and the inner guidance they hear that I hear from from God, the universe, or whatever spiritual being you choose. And that's how you know you're on the right path. Not because you hit some arbitrary number in your bank account or you have a certain vehicle on your parked in your driveway, or because you're able to brag to your coworker that you can go on this fancy ski vacation or or that one, or in in just this sort of keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Slow living is about keeping your eyes on your own paper and just doing what feels right and knowing that you're on the right path and. It doesn't mean you need to be a minimalist and and get rid of all of your personal items. This is about doing what you want and what you know deep down inside you're meant to be. Are you wondering if you're on the right path? Are you secretly worried that you are forgetting to put your own needs and wants first while you raise your family? What if I told you it is not too late? And you really could have the dream life you've always wanted. And all it would take is a few tweaks to your mindset. Each week, I have a few open slots for free coaching calls. Together, we can decipher your most challenging mindset block and clear it away so you can live out the life you've always wanted. You can sign up at stephanieoday.com forward slash mindset. You should hurry because I'm not sure how long I'm going to have this available for free and I'd hate for you to miss out. The URL again is stephanieoday.com 
forward slash mindset. Okay, so back to this little mini vacation that Adam and I went on. It was the first time we left the kids since November 24th, 2019. And I remember this date because it happened to be my birthday. And we spent one night in a beach resort spa, and my gift was an in-room couples massage. And it was lovely, and it was wonderful. It was actually the first paid-for massage that Adam and I have ever treated ourselves to, because pampering ourselves in this way is just not something that we choose to do regularly. And I'm sure there are plenty of health and psychological benefits of getting massages regularly, but I've always chosen to just save or invest our money in other ways. So this particular occasion felt very luxurious and very pampery. And then the pandemic hit. And while we've gone away to the the family cabin a few times and we've taken the kids on a getaway here and there, we haven't really felt ready to leave them and Sheldon (laughs) until this past weekend. And all in all, we were actually only gone a grand total of 26 hours. And it was just refreshing and amazing and we didn't go very far away. We we just crossed the bridge and ended up in Marin County. And we had fantastic meals and we watched the sailboats on the water. And it was just picture perfect and the weather couldn't have been any better. But you know what? Our day-to-day really is fantastic. And and I just I love the life that we've crafted here. And so I want you to just kind of pay attention to that and and pay attention to what your day-to-day is and what you feel like when you're planning getaways and then when you turn around and come home. Because I want you to be excited to go away and I want you to go away to recharge your batteries but not to escape. And my hope and my wish is that you get just as excited, that you literally get butterflies in your stomach when you think of your home and the people that are in it. Because this is it. This is your life. And what do you want from it and out of it? And are you living your dream? And if you're not, why not? And what can you do? What can you tweak right now to make your everyday life feel better. I'd like for you to plan out your days, your weeks, your months, and your years in a way that fulfills your dreams. If you get excited about hotel towels, then maybe you should think about upgrading your towels. If you like camping because you're unplugged, then maybe you should think about unplugging here and there for a few days. Unplug, just decide. Flip off the Wi-Fi in the house and find a way to unplug more often. If you like being on vacation because you feel free from the burden of checking work email, then maybe you need to incorporate some more boundaries in your day-to-day. If you think your kids or your spouse behaves better on vacation, what can you do to help recreate this behavior at home? Vacations are amazing, and experiencing new things and having adventures are phenomenal. But don't forget to live in the here and the now, because you're too busy planning your next gout away. Love the now. And if you don't, then you know what you need to work on. Okay, so let's get started on these 21 success secrets. And and these are are sort of stephisms. These are these are my definitions of success because I think true success is a feeling that comes within. It is not a number. It is not a house on a hill. It is not a car parked in your driveway. I want you to feel calm and feel content and feel like you have really given it your all each and every day. It feels so good at the end of the day to climb into your bed and know 
that you rocked it. You rocked it in all areas of your life. And so that's what we're going to dive into. So I think today we'll do, I don't know, five or so of these 21 success secrets. And then in the next two episodes, we'll finish up our series. So the first one is to love yourself. I want you to look in the mirror and really fall in love with who you see when you look back. I want you to stare and pay attention to the laugh lines and the freckles and the moles and the sunspots and the stretch marks. I want you to really look deeply at yourself and love yourself, all of it. And this takes some time and it might need some thoughtful coaching, but I want you to work on deeply and unconditionally loving yourself. And the word unconditional is what's key here. Not, oh, when I lose 10 pounds or, oh, if only I had a chin lift. No. Love and honor and cherish yourself as you look right now and as you are right now. So take the time. Sit. Sit in front of a mirror and make eye contact with yourself. The first few times with this, I cried. A lot of the people that I work with when I recommend this, cry. You can use a hand mirror. You can sit in front of a full-length mirror. If you're really feeling bold, you can lock the door and strip naked and sit in front of a full-length mirror and just stare and just be and just forgive all of the past and just be at one with who you are and love yourself unconditionally. All of the stuff that happened in the past that got you to where you are now. And today's the day. This is it. This is where the pin gets put in the timeline. And then from here, you move forward and you plan out your future. Okay. Success secret number two. Plan out where you're going. So we talked about this in the third episode of this podcast when we discussed the five steps to living a slow life. And that's to program out your GPS. So I also just said a second ago, Put a pin in where you are right now and love yourself. And now let's figure out where this self, this human, this wonderful being of which you are, where that person is going. You need to know where you're headed. And that is how you set goals for yourself. And these goals can be small or they can be large and huge and hairy and honking and audacious. That is your choice. But if you don't have a basic direction to how you plan out your day or your week or your month, you're going to find you're essentially not making any forward momentum towards anything. And you're just living in firefighter mode or living by the seat of your pants. Remember, you are the adult in charge and you get to call the shots. So I teach the Beast Pyramid and in there we talk about the different components needed to live a calm and peaceful life. And I ask my coaching clients, I ask them to make goals for each of those segments. So right now, decide for yourself, where are you headed with your health? Where are you going with your time management and your finances? Your current relationships, are you happy with them? Make a plan on where you want to go in each of these things within the next three to five years. And that brings us to success secret number three, take action daily. And this is something that most people refuse to do because we're humans and humans don't really want to do the things we don't want to do. (laughs) And for a lot of it, a lot of us taking action seems like hard work and hard work for most of us does not equal fun. So stop deciding that working towards a goal isn't fun. Decide how freaking amazing you're going to feel and how accomplished and how lovely and warm and proud you'll be when you meet or exceed your goals. And then do something about it every day, even when you don't really want to. 
just do a teensy bit. They always say that the hardest yoga move is rolling out your yoga mat. So just commit to that. And I know you can do it. In the last episode, um, Catherine, my coaching client, we joked about how both of us put the phone, our, our alarm phone, because we've told Siri to set the alarm for us, on the opposite side of the room. So we have to physically get out of bed. Our feet have to touch the ground in order to turn the alarm off in the morning. When you do that, you have already done such a huge step because you have already decided to take charge of your day. And I know you, and what the second your feet touch the ground and you stand up, you're going to have to go pee. So go pee. And by the time you go pee, you're already half awake. You might as well put your slippers and your sweatpants on and go downstairs or in the other room or wherever it is and, and get started on your day. You don't need to climb back in. And it's those tiny, little, teensy, tiny steps that create this snowball effect. And before you know it, you're rolling downhill, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and gaining momentum towards your goals. And then just like a bowling pin, you're going to, or a bowling ball, you're going to knock those pins down and you're going to knock your goals down. And that is what taking teeny tiny action steps each and every day will do for you. Number four, you're going to take action, but number four is you are going to get enough sleep. And I recorded a whole episode for you on sleep. It's number 18. So if you haven't heard that one, listen to it. Because in our society, we are told silly things about sleep, silly things that are wrong. Stuff like, oh, sleep is for the weak, or I'll sleep when I'm dead. And so you end up just not valuing the restorative properties of sleep. You can't be creative. You can't just kind of let your ideas bounce and, and be calm and, and listen to, to the next nudge of wisdom if you're sleep deprived. I don't want you to caffeinate yourself around the clock and, and with shots of espresso and Red Bull and monster drinks. There's, there's kids in college and, and these young kids who just put off sleep and they're going, 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 going until they literally crash. And that is not cool. If you're a parent, your children are watching you. Rest, sleep, take a break and catch your breath and model good sleep habits for your children. This go, go, go world we're living in, it puts sleep on the back burner and it's detrimental to all of society's health. You're more prone to get into car accidents, you're taxing your heart, you're in your brain, and lack of sleep is also a leading contributor to Alzheimer's. So do yourself and the world and your future productivity self, I don't even know what I'm saying, future productive self a favor. Take a nap, get some sleep, go to bed early, replenish your body. Number five, okay, be around people who are good for you. So Jim Rohn is credited with saying that you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with on a daily basis. So for a lot of us, these people are our own immediate family and our coworkers. And depending on who these people are, this might be a bit of a letdown to you. And maybe you need to start looking around and realizing that, hey, there's a reason I'm not meeting my goals here. There's, there's a reason that sometimes I, I feel kind of a bit of a slug or a bit of a, a, a lazyish person. Look at these schlubs I'm surrounded by. So if you find that you're interested in achieving and your friends and your peers aren't, that's okay. You don't need to get rid of all your friends. You don't need to denounce yourself from your family. You get to decide. And I'm just asking you to be aware and start reading things that are interesting to you. Start listening to different podcasts. Surround with yourself with different ideas and just being mindful of who you allow into your life and don't allow is going to set you leaps and bounds above so many others. And there's also a bit of a cautionary tale because if you find that you're in this sort of hyper-competitive, 
hyper hustly go, go, go environment, that's not good either. So where I live, there's this sort of this overwhelming expectation to be the best of the best, to surpass, to be a prodigy, and and to sort of want monetary success as bad as you want to breathe. And if you don't fill every second of your day with being productive, then you're a loser. And that's not healthy. It's, It's not a sustainable mindset, and it's not correct in any way. There is a very wide line between motivating yourself to get up off the couch and be in charge of your life and beating yourself up for not being the best of the best of the best of the best. I, for one, am a believer in participation trophies. I just want you to do your best. It is okay to not be cutthroat. It is okay to open doors for the elderly and let pregnant women have your spot on the bus. It is okay to not climb to the top of the very top of the mountain and and breathe in the thin air. It's okay to just be okay with being okay, with being suburban instead of metro. It's okay with liking a three-bedroom, two-bath house with a car in the driveway. It's okay to not want to eat at the fanciest restaurants and wear the fanciest clothes. There's nothing wrong with you, and you have not settled in any way. I joke that I like to go and walk around Pottery Barn for ideas, And then I go and I take those ideas to Target. And I am a Target girl (laughs) through and through. And I am A-OK with that. And I am at peace with it. And so I want you to be at peace with things too. And, And it goes back to keeping your eyes on your own work. And don't feel like you have to compete with others. If others are on sort of this this fast-paced trajectory path, and it doesn't sit well with you, then just decide. Make your own path. And and if the people that you're surrounding yourself with might not be the best for your physical or your mental health, find a way to steer, steer away and start to create some boundaries. And it's okay to put your own needs first and take a step back and reprioritize. So way back in the first few episodes of this podcast, we talked about figuring out your priorities. And so if you find that the people in your day-to-day life are either holding you back in some way, or on the flip side, they're making you feel bad, then take a pause and reassess. Okay, so those were the first five of, we're going to do 21 success secrets. So as a bit of a recap, so number one was to love yourself. And I want you to love yourself unconditionally, warts and all. Look in the mirror and realize that who you see looking back at you has done a lot, has lived through a lot, and has achieved a lot, and fall deeply and madly in love with that person. Number two, plan out where you're going. You need to know where you're headed. So decide, today's the day. This is my A point. Now let's figure out where my B point is. And then from there, number three, take tiny little action steps daily to get to that B point. And if it takes a lifetime, that's okay. Because if we're lucky, life is long and I want you to enjoy the journey and map it out and and, and take detours. Number four, Get adequate sleep. You are no good to anybody if you are not taking care of yourself and getting restful sleep that really makes you feel revived and refreshed when you wake up in the morning. And number five, surround yourself with people who are good for you. And that might take some tweaking. And remember, you cannot change anybody. All you can do is work on yourself And chances are that the 
different success habits that you have and the different ways that you start sort of molding yourself for the better, the people around you are going to take notice and they're going to take stock and they'll start tweaking themselves also. Okay, that's it for me for today. I will see you next time and we'll go over another, I don't know, five, six or seven of these success secrets as we inch our way up to episode number 21. I hope you enjoyed this and I am happy to hear from you. So at any time, hit me up on Facebook or on Instagram. I'm at Stephanie O'Day. Um, the website is stephanieoday.com. You can shoot me an email. I answer back to all my emails. If you are ready to sort of map out your own life and, and success story and, and plan your, your slow down and And if you are ready to join us in the Simple Shortcuts to Peace course, I would love to have you. That is at stephanieoday.com forward slash peace. And in it, we will talk about setting yourself up for the living out the life of your dreams. And if you ever sort of wanted to dabble with self-coaching or group coaching, this is the place to do it because it really is the best bang for your buck. Because for all of 2022, when you sign up for Simple Shortcuts to Peace, you have two one-on-one coaching calls that you can redeem with me at any time. There is no time limit or expiration date on these coaching calls. But when you take the time to really sort of plan out the life of your dreams, you've got your health in check, your time management, your finances your household organizations, and all of your relationships, all of these pieces of the puzzles are working together in a cohesive way that makes sense to you in your life, that's when you get to put the teeny tiny piece of the pyramid on top, the piece section, the piece piece. (laughs) That is where it comes from. And that's what I want. I want you to love every bitty, aspect of your life, the life that you have created, that you had planned. Because remember, if it's meant to be, it's up to me and it's up to you. And I know that you can do it. And that is what I hope for you. All right. I will see you again next time. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.